In 2016, two teenagers in San Jose, California went into an art museum and, as a prank, put glasses on the floor. These glasses, mistaken as an art piece in the show, quickly gained a crowd. People took pictures and discussed it as if it were another piece in the art show, because, to the people who took pictures and talked about those glasses, it might as well have been. Right-wing journalists and conspiracy theorists tend to point to things like this as examples of how pretentious, talentless, vacuous, yeah, that modern art has become. After all, if people are willing to believe that glasses are an art piece in the museum, what kind of art is housed there? But people who write this piece off, and yes, I will be referring to it as a piece, as simply a lampooning of modern art, fail to see the amazing philosophical dilemma presented here. However, in order to understand this dilemma, let's set some ground rules. So the pranksters who set the glasses in the museum don't view those glasses as an art piece, that's fair to assume. It's also fair to assume that the people who were looking at the glasses in the museum did view them as an art piece. So here's the question. Whose perception is more valid? The knee-jerk reaction is that the artist's opinion in this case is more valid. After all, they created it. Shouldn't they get the final say in what their piece means? But let's say for a moment that you are one of the people in the museum, and something about those glasses strikes you as strangely elegant. Maybe you see them as representing how our perception of a place lingers long after we have left it. Or maybe you don't think it has any meaning, but something about the idea of this everyday item that would normally just be cast aside being held up to the level of importance in this gallery is very interesting to you. Maybe you relay that to your friend. Maybe you even take a picture of those glasses, and driving home you even think about them a little bit. Are all those ideas and thoughts labeled automatically invalid because the people who created the piece don't view their artwork as art? The internet tends to deal with hard truths. Just look at the wikis for Star Wars or Harry Potter. Huge pages detailing what things are, but not what things mean. Films can often be proven factually bad or good on the internet because of logical qualities, which results in something so fundamental to film criticism as meaning being often overlooked. It's cultural things like this that I feel contribute to a lot of the reason it's so hard for the internet to accept modern art. But ideas so core to the perception of modern art as the central idea behind a piece can change depending on who is viewing it are not baked into the threads of any facet of the internet. But this is a bit different, isn't it? We're not talking about two people disagreeing about the meaning of an art piece. This is the creators themselves saying they didn't intend to make art. Here it seems pretty self-evident. If the people who put the glasses on the floor didn't want to make art, weren't trying to make art, and were actively hoping to mock modern art, they couldn't have accidentally made art, right? But the thing is, visual art relies on people viewing it. That's why it's visual art. The same goes for auditory art forms, interactive art forms. All art forms rely upon people who consume that art. It's the old adage of, if a tree falls and no one is around to hear it, will it still make a noise? Except, if art is made but no one is around to view it, is it even art? The thing a lot of people don't get is that paintings and sculptures, things that we would think of as high art, are only considered art because people, thousands of years ago, looked at them and said, this is art. Which is why art is so hard to define. To use what Innuendo Studio said in his seminal essay, Tomatoes or How Not to Define Art, the definition of art is impossible to find because it is something man-made with an equally man-made definition. A chair is a man-made thing, but the definition of a chair presents itself to us. There are chairs and then there are not chairs that don't do what chairs do. Maybe there are gray areas, but no one's going to look at a computer monitor and say, this is a chair. Art, however, is only known as art because we collectively decided it was art. If we didn't decide that painting was art, the Mona Lisa would just be some colorful cloth, the thinking man just a big waste of metal, you get the point. So if art is only art because we all agree it is art, when a piece comes along that is meant to challenge our perception of what art is, who gets to decide if it qualifies? The people viewing it. Pieces like Duchamp's Fountain are made with the express purpose of getting people to ask the question, is this art? And if you're responding to that question, even if your answer is no, then you're inherently acknowledging the fact that there was a question in the first place. And if you acknowledge that the question was being asked, there is an additional acknowledgement that for some people, the answer will be yes. That's why the question, is this art, is often misused, because whether or not something is art depends on whether or not the people viewing the artwork think of it as such. 